This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Apple Watch Series 3. This one happens to have LTE. Maybe you didn't get too excited about the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus, but clearly people are more excited by the Apple Watch Series 3, particularly the LTE model, because that one's sold out, and it's going to be weeks before you can even get one. Should you bother ordering one? We're going to find out now. The Apple Watch Series 3 is available with as they call it, GPS. I don't know why they have to do that, but the normal Apple Watch Series 3, in other words, is $329 starting price. And that's for the aluminum finish, available in a variety of colors, your usual gold, which is really kind of pink, uh, space gray, and silver. Of course, the stainless steel, that goes up in price, $599. If you want the LTE model, it goes with up to a starting price of $399. It will also be available in the Nike editions, and it's going to be several weeks before those are available. And of course, for those of you who truly have a lot of money, there's the Hermes Fancy Pants Band and the Ceramic Watch as well. So when you get the LTE model, you get a couple extra things, including more storage internally. Why this is, I don't know, but the standard $329 Series 3 has 8 gigabytes of storage, and the LTE one has 16 gigabytes of storage. Maybe to make room for more, I don't know, streaming stuff, downloading stuff directly to the watch in the future. As usual, it uses Apple's band system. So here you can see we have an example of some bands. These have not changed. 38 millimeter and 42 millimeter size bands. I have the 38 millimeter because I have fairly small wrists. And you've got nice ones like the Milanese and then these, which are the standard kind of bands that come with it. Third party bands this is the Nike band right here. By the way, this is the Series 2, which you really can't tell the difference between the Series 2 and the Series 3. If you just look at them, they're about the same size, the same weight. The only difference is if I take this off, you can see the LTE model gets a red dot. So that means if you get the regular Series 3 watch without LTE, it really will look identical to the last one. Believe me, it is not identical in terms of the things that are the most important, which are <laughs> speed and connectivity. The original Apple Watch was a cool thing, but it was pretty darn slow. So the Series 2 is supposedly 50% faster, and the Series 2 felt getting there, but still using the native apps on the watch, you know, the ones you get to when you go here, among others, still seem kind of sluggish. And I found, really, I just use the watch for notifications. With Series 3, they're claiming, again, 70% faster all over again. And it really is finally fast enough. Going through watch faces is quick. Launching apps on here is finally quick enough. So, like, let's go to, like, CNN, something a little data heavy. And there's our pictures and all that sort of thing. It's not painful to use anymore, so I don't just resort to going back to my phone, which is, for something this expensive, you, you would hope would be the case. So if you get the LTE model, notice we have a new little button here. If you're familiar with the Apple Watch, these controls are here. You can use it as a flashlight. You see how much battery you have left. You can mute it. You can put it in airplane mode, so on. Well, that's the one for the cellular connection right there. And you can manually turn it on and off if you wish to do so. Otherwise, it will automatically switch onto LTE if there's no available Bluetooth connection to your phone and no available Wi-Fi. Just like the last generations, whatever Wi-Fi access points you have on your phone will get synced to the watch. So you don't actually have to type in Wi-Fi codes on the watch directly, thank goodness. Works pretty well. Now, some early reviews made a big deal about the fact that this had problems handing off between LTE and unknown Wi-Fi access points. We're talking the junky kind of Wi-Fi access points that they have at various stores and restaurants where there is a interstitial page, a login page, or an accepting the terms and agreements kind of thing. I haven't had the watch connect to any of those. Perhaps if I had saved them on my phone, Maybe. I don't know. I don't think that's going to be so much of a problem now that people have these in their hand. They're not having that issue. If you live in some place like New York City, which has incredible Wi-Fi access point pollution, including a lot of those kind of things, you might have a problem. So this works really well. I was able, once it was activated, to make calls and send texts within about five minutes of activation, and it does work just fine. If you walk away from your phone and you get out of Wi-Fi range and Bluetooth range, it takes about 20, 30 seconds or so, and then it switches over to LTE. And then you'll have little signal strength bars on the face, so you, you know how it's doing there. Not a problem. Activation was a nightmare on launch week. Really, things were not going very smoothly. I think that Verizon and Sprint may have had the easiest time. T-Mobile business customers had a problem, and AT&T was just a disaster. It took hours to get this activated on AT&T. Hopefully, things will be smoother now, though. 
If you do want to have LTE, and you actually, you don't have to. I know some people are actually intending to buy this watch just because they want the, the ceramic back sensor area and the more storage on it. Uh, you don't have to activate LTE. You don't have to ever use it. If you do, it's $10 a month on all the major carriers. This is an unlocked watch. It's not locked to any carrier. Even after you activate it, it will not be locked to any carrier. You will switch carriers if you wish. It has an eSIM, not a physical removable SIM. So that adds a little complication. You have to make sure it's released from one carrier before you can go to another. Uh, but other than that, so it's 10 bucks a month, but you get your first three months free plus activation is waived, I guess. That's the whole launch promo for this first LTE Apple Watch. Will it be that way for the Apple Watch Series 4 or 5? Who knows? I don't know. Out of the box, this runs Watch OS 4, and we actually covered that a little bit in our new iOS 11 and Watch OS 4 What's New video. The, the improvements here are, generally speaking, good and aesthetically pleasing. Things like this get a little more graphical. So say we're going to go do an indoor cycle. And by the way, this does have a speaker if you're new to Apple Watch. So you can hear it beeping, and that means alarms are audible too. So it's going to measure my pulse, but of course it can't because it's not actually on my wrist. And the integration with the music player here is quite nice. Ah, the music player. Let's get into that for a minute though here. Uh, <laughs> the, the new music app for Watch OS 4 isn't going to be ready until October. It will support Apple's own streaming music service. If you subscribe to that, we don't know about any other third-party applications. And right now I cannot browse the music that is installed on my phone, which you used to be able to do to stream it in between and control playback. You can copy music to the watch still. So there is that. So that's not ready at press time. Oopsies. For those of you who are new to Apple Watch, you have a companion program on your watch. All the smart watches use that sort of thing. You can get basic information and check out your cellular connection using the one right over here. But what I want to take a look at right now is, here's control of all notifications, by the way. So you can control which things give you a notification on the watch and which don't. That's a good thing right there. You can install apps if you don't have them installed. So I've got Weatherbug installed on there, all these different things. This is pretty handy. You even have things like a decibel measurer so I can see how loud a fan is on a gaming laptop. Converter, unit converter. There's a lot of useful applications out there. But let's switch over to the Help app so you can see what's new. This has gotten even more sophisticated and pretty nice. Now here's another great improvement for the Series 3 versus the Series 2. Each series gets better with monitoring heart rate. Series 1 was just, eh, it was a little flaky. Series 2 sometimes had problems with exercise that involved erratic arm movements like the rowing machine or weight lifting. So sometimes it would just spin and give up or give some weird reading. Series 3 is spot on doing those exercises. I took this to the gym for an hour workout doing a rowing machine, an exercise bike, and weightlifting, and it monitored all those correctly. So, and we have some new things that it checks out here. So we have heart rate variability. They haven't really explained what that means yet. I think this is still what they're doing in conjunction with Stanford to see how even your heart rate is, looking for arrhythmias. I don't believe this is heart rate variability, usually not measured in milliseconds. That's a different health check, where higher numbers are better. It gets confusing. So we've got most recent heart rate. We've got our standing activity, resting energy, steps, walking and running, flights climb, walking heart rate average, resting heart rate average, and we have VO2 max, but that's only going to get measured if you're out doing an outdoor run or an outdoor cycle, which I generally don't do. My knees just, <laughs> they don't like doing that anymore, doing real running. So that's another information source that you've got there. So the health items here just keep getting more and more impressive and more and more accurate to the point where that, again, the heart rate monitor on this was just as accurate as what the machines at the gym told me or what a chest mounted monitor is going to tell you. That's pretty darn useful. So speaking of being at the gym for an hour of exercising, an hour and a half total, I was using LTE at that point to stay connected because my phone was locked away in the locker. And, of course, it's using the heart rate monitor continuously through much of the time. That's one of the big drains on the battery. I was not using the GPS because those were not outdoor exercises. And it used about 20% of the battery in that time. Being on LTE, I made a call. I did a couple of text messages. So when Apple says that you get about an hour of talk time, keep that in mind. Uh, it's not really designed to replace your phone. If you're going to be talking for an hour, you still need to be using your phone. Sadly, that's the state of technology now. They just can't fit a battery big enough inside of a watch to give you longer talk time. But it's perfect for receiving and making quick calls. It's just fine for texts. And by the way, that was only about 
5% more battery consumed than I saw with my Series 2. So mostly it's still the heart rate monitor that's using that, unless you are LTEing a whole heck of a lot. Now, we don't have the streaming music service available yet. That would be another way to actually drain the battery quite a bit on LTE. And they do tell us talk time, but we don't know about streaming time. Now, for those of you who do want to stream music playlists from your phone right now, there are a few third-party apps that are working, like Me Player Lite. I assume I'm saying that correctly, N-E Player Lite. That one does work for doing that. Uh, I'm sure that podcasts will come back in October as well. So there's, there's definitely hope for that. But you do need, despite the fact that the watch has a speaker, you do need to pair Bluetooth headphones to the watch if you want to do that. It will not blare music out of the speaker when you're streaming music or playing music that you have stored locally. By the way, the LTE watch has an ever so slightly larger, higher capacity battery than the non-LTE model, but it's really, really close. We're talking 1.07 watt hours versus 1.03. Not a big selling point if you're thinking about buying it just for that particular reason. So that's the Apple Watch Series 3 available with or without LTE. That one is up to you. And, you know, like I said, I find that one of the stickiest features for iOS, the, the most compelling ones these days, happens to be the Apple Watch because it really does solve that problem of having to take the big old phone out of your pocket a whole lot. You get your notifications on your wrist. You can use Siri on your wrist. There's even little apps, your little small versions of Twitter and Instagram. Yes, you can tweet from your watch. So it's nice to have that independence. And the LTE, obviously, just takes that even further. You can go for a run, a walk, a jog. Sometimes me, I go out the door and I just totally forget my phone. I was like, oh, look, something pretty to take a picture of with the regular camera, not the iPhone. And I'm like, oh, I don't have any way to call and say where I just went back home. Well, now you do. So it works pretty well. They're having some growing pains when it comes to activation and all that sort of thing. They'll get it worked out, right? So it's pretty good. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.